Welcome to the Empowering Voices of Harmony, Cold Journeys to Mental Health Wellness. Before we begin, we would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we work. We pay our respects to elders, past and present, and we extend that respect to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples tuning in today. A disclaimer that this podcast is intended for educational purposes only and should not be relied on as personal advice. Always seek the guidance of your doctor, psychologist or other qualified health professionals regarding your physical and or mental health. If you're experiencing a crisis, call triple O or Lifeline on 13 11 14 for suicide prevention services. Lifeline also offers SMS service on 0477 13 11 14. To learn more about Mental Health Foundation Australia, visit our website at mhfa.org.au. You can also follow us for updates on Instagram, Twitter or Facebook. You can also call us at 1300 643 287 or email us at admin at mhfa.org.au. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Empowering Voices of Harmony. The goal of this podcast is to empower diverse voices, which is why we have someone from a very different culture with us today, Vanessa. Thank you for having me. So Vanessa here is not just someone who has overcome a lot of mental health challenges, but she's also doing her master's in professional psychology and working as a provisional psychologist and helping lots of others overcome their mental health challenges. So Vanessa, do you want to tell us why you have decided to join us today and also a bit about your background? Yeah, so I decided to join today because I thought it would be interesting to talk about how culture has an impact on mental health, um, particularly because... I grew up in a pretty interesting um, environment where my parents are both from different cultures um, but ethnically Chinese. Um, So my mom is from Hong Kong and my dad is Malaysian Chinese um, and they were both actually international students. Yeah, so being a child of international students, being born in Australia, I thought Mm -hmm. that would be quite interesting to sort of share some insights on how um, culture has an impact on Um, people from migrant backgrounds as well that's very interesting like your background seems very complicated to me because I belong to a very simple like ethnically just one thing so for you it must be very difficult especially like when you were a child Uh, I'm sure there must have been complications that you had to face as a child because your parents are speak a different language they probably want to like you know protect their culture at home but when you grow get out it's a different culture Mm -hmm. so do you want to talk something about this tell us something about that yeah so uh, I guess I remember growing up in Australia and um, in my household we only speak Cantonese (laughs) because my mum really was afraid that we would forget our language and um, you know, lose ourselves in the Australian culture and mm. forget our roots and not be able to communicate with the family. So I actually didn't learn English until I was about three to four. Um, and my mom was actually quite surprised when I utter English words because she's never spoken to me in English um, as an attempt to keep the language alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how was that at home? Like, was she like when you would say, utter English words for that matter? Like, would she like, how would she react to that? Well, actually, I um I didn't really. I mean, I was quite young. I was basically a baby at that time. Mm-hmm. Um. So you know, language was probably still a learning thing for me. But um, in terms of like speaking. I think there was once when I actually just suddenly looked at her and I said, what are you talking about? (laughs) And my mom was so surprised because (laughs) she didn't expect that. She never taught me any English. Um, And I guess we had neighbors, we had, you know, Australian neighbors, but, um, you know, when we played with them, 
we were still babies, so we didn't really communicate with words. So it was very surprising. <laughs> Just sign language, you mean like um, baby language? Yeah, baby language, or like, you know, one or two words, you know, snake, or something <laughs> like that. But not so much a complete sentence. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what my mom thought was that if I go, go out into the society, that we will just learn English somehow, absorb that. But mm. obviously it's not the case. Yeah. What about like school then? Like if you haven't learned like properly, if you have, haven't used English till um, you were like, three or four, yeah. then the people, the students, your classmates would know English. So how did you converse with them? Was that a problem when you started schooling? Um, so I guess like in my parents' mind, um, you know, they just really thought that I would just, you know, gradually learn the language somehow. Mm -hmm. Um, but I guess it's, it was a little difficult only because I guess the only like English that I really heard was how my parents pronounced them. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, sometimes there were grammar errors, sometimes there were just mispronunciation. So just growing up, sometimes I had a bit of confusion um, Mm -hmm. on how to pronounce words or like sometimes, like, you know, sometimes it's very cultural. So, you know, my my mom would say, did you open the light Um, Mm -hmm. instead of did you turn on the light? So I would say things like that. And my friends would say, what? Open the light? Like, what do you mean? (laughs) Um, so there are there are times when it's like that, um, but I do slowly pick up from it. Yeah. Was that difficult um, as a child to like you know go through that because you know when you're a child you might have this feeling of like uh, being left out or being the only one who is speaking like that. Um, I guess it was confusing and mm-hmm. it was embarrassing. Um, but I think at that point we were all quite young, so Mm -hmm. the kids didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes they did pick up on how I say things (sighs) and yeah, so they just very naturally like picked it up and sometimes that's just how it is. Um, but I also have to say, um, that I, I didn't entirely have my full schooling in Australia Mm -hmm. as well. Um, I also had my primary school in Malaysia. Um, I migrated back there um, mm. because my dad had a job. So just a bit of a mixture of like international student experiences and local as well. How did that go? Like, you know, you're going back to Malaysia for your primary school and then you came back to Australia, right? So yeah. when you came back to Australia, like obviously that when you're in primary school in Malaysia, you're like picking up a lot of like, you're growing up like as a psychologist, you know, that is the age where you like pick up things from your environment and habits, which are very different from like Australian, like probably culture, like the way, you Mm -hmm. know, things are around here. So like, how did you cope with that when you came here? Was it ever a problem to you? Definitely was a problem. Um, (laughs) I guess, like, just, just, you know, growing up in Malaysia, um, if people don't know what Malaysian culture is like, Mm -hmm. it's actually a blend of languages. So we have, you know, Chinese migrants, we have, you know, Chinese people, we have Malay people, we have um, Indians as well, we have, like, all kinds of other people, um, Portuguese as well. So in terms of speaking, we actually tend to blend words. Mm -hmm. So I guess my first experience being in Malaysia was when... A kid just treated me as normal um, even though I came as an international student then um, being introduced to class um, people say hey look this is girl from Australia so I had a bit of an Australian accent um, Mm -hmm. and I was still learning English by that time you Mm -hmm. know I was like four or five Mm -hmm. Um, and then I have kids the same age talking to me like as if I'm no different and I just couldn't understand what they were saying because they added in Malay words and I thought, oh, is this just an English word that I didn't know? <laughs> um, yeah, so it was a bit like that and eventually I, I guess I yeah, picked up, um, you know, the words mm-hmm. and I gradually um, assimilated it into culture. I started speaking the way they do, um, just being a regular kid eventually. But then moving back to Australia again, mm, yeah, exactly. Um, 
yeah, then I felt like a second international student. <laughs>、um, obviously, I have a different accent、mm-hmm. and I speak differently. There's just very、uh, interesting, like, contrast of how I use my words and my、mm-hmm. grammar. Even though I speak English, it's probably a different kind of English. But m o l e m a s English. I totally get that with my own English. Like,、yeah. A lot of people like, say, say to me, like, my partner would always say, like,、well, What did you say? I'm, like, I'm making sense. It's okay. I'm making sense. I know. You can, I can communicate. That's all we need. Yeah, you can understand me. That's, that's what's important. Yeah. yeah. So I guess, like, you know, being a second international student. I guess the second time、mm-hmm. I once again felt like a foreigner,、mm-hmm. um, and people you know, obviously treat me like I'm an outsider. So it's a bit confusing because I have an Australian passport, <laughs> but I speak a different accent、um, at that point when I was 12, 13.、Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was, it was quite interesting.、Um, but again, you know, I guess moving back to Australia young means that I have. The time to、um, learn, relearn Australian culture, exactly, and、yeah. to blend in again. And so, I guess my identity at the moment is really a mixture of international student and local, a bit confused. <laughs> Well, that kind of fits our criteria so perfectly because, you know, culturally and linguistically, super diverse that you are. <laughs> like, you are like all in one in that, at, at this point. So, it like kind of suits our podcast like the perfect way.、Mm-hmm. So, would you like to like tell us something about、uh, your high school when you like, you said that you're very young, so you had the opportunity to learn things, but. How was it at high school? Did you like get bullied because of like having a different accent? Did you come across any like tough times because of that? Yeah, definitely. I think at the start, you know, the kids were young, so they had this curiosity when it comes to different cultures. So at the, at,、uh, at the start, it felt, you know, pretty okay.、Um, they were very curious and respectful.、Um, Obviously, because of schooling and how teachers teach them to、mm. um, behave as well. But I guess going into high school,、um, people start you know, becoming teenagers and、yeah. you know, having a bit of、um, attitude, you know, wanting to be cool and things like that. So it was cool back then. I was, I was one of the three Asians in my high school.、Mm. Um, and so it was not a very culturally diverse high school. <laughs> Um, and you know, for them to look cool, they like to sort of mock you know, the culture and、mm-hmm. you know, say a lot of stereotypical, very ignorant things.、Um, and you just have to roll with it, really. At some point, I think it's an interesting identity where people who grew up here、um, being a minority they may end up starting to hate their own culture、mm-hmm. as a result, just to blend in. So, you know, because it's just three of us,、um, I have, I know one person who particularly made fun of their own culture just to fit in.、Um, you know, just to say, hey, Asians aren't, you know, all that.、Uh, we do all these things that are very embarrassing. Huh, I'm not like them because I'm westernized.、Mm-hmm. Um, and so they take that opportunity to also.、Um, yeah, continue the harassment. I wouldn't say it's bullying. I would say it's more out of ignorance and、mm-hmm. just out of wanting to be cool. As a psychologist, like, what is your view on like, someone trying to you know, hate on their own culture、um, just to fit in? Because back home they have to go and like, their parents are going to be proud of their culture because they're already you know, of that age、mm-hmm. and they love their culture. Yeah, so I suppose it's. Obviously, not great, and it's probably going to、um, you know, have a bit of identity problem、um, for the kid because they have to compartmentalize you know, who they are outside、mm-hmm. and who they are inside, which might be very different because, particularly, like, you know, from my background, being respectful to your parents and being respectful to your family、yes. is such a big thing.、Yes. And so, you see this kid out there who's screaming all kinds of things, you know, being very dominant,、mm-hmm. coming home. Very, very quiet, very gentle,、mm-hmm. just a complete different kind of person.、Um, but 
you know, I guess we have to understand that it is for survival mm -hmm. and that, you know, obviously it's not a great experience to be harassed or to be um, picked on or to be isolated, mm -hmm. to be different. And so kids got to do what they got to do to survive in a school environment where teachers might be ignorant, um, mm -hmm. where the school might be ignorant of all the issues that they are facing. And so, you know, just having to do that, that must be quite difficult, mm -hmm. but it's so necessary. But I guess, I guess as a result, they would have had a bit of embarrassment and shame for their own culture and mm -hmm. um, a different kind of attitude and maybe resentment as well, you know, to be a migrant. Why am I a migrant? Um, yeah. Yeah, and what do you think, like, when you say it, talk about it like that, I end up thinking like maybe you know when you when someone is hating on their culture to fit in and you know as a child all of those things are in your mind and it stays for mm -hmm. a lifetime you know when you're a child if this thing goes and then it'll stay for a lifetime mm -hmm. so do you think it ends up on ends up in a you know in a result where like you're kind of like going away from drifting from from your culture there are kids growing up here from migrant backgrounds who have lost their cultural identity and okay. so they turn to drugs, they feel left out, they feel like they've been torn in between worlds as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, mental health, you know, all kinds of things. And, you know, us having traditional cultures, you know, from like Asia, for example, um, we, we have those values to protect ourselves from being lost, mm -hmm. from turning to drugs from doing things that harm ourselves mm -hmm. and so when we lose our culture we lose that protection and then we don't know what to do and we might even shut out our family so you know our family is probably you know fighting to mm -hmm. protect us mm -hmm. but we're rebelling against them because we want because either way we feel endangered mm -hmm. we feel endangered because we are rejected mm -hmm. from the Australian culture yeah or that we are rejected by our family because we're not what they want us to be and so this whole identity thing it's it's a very dangerous mix um, and so I guess particularly as well there's a big issue when it comes to people from migrant culture mm -hmm. um, having partners mm -hmm. with you know white Australians for example mm -hmm. and maybe their family might mm -hmm. not approve of that yes. or they have certain views on that or there's a cultural clash but in order for them to blend in they want to feel normal so they want to be with you know the white Australian yes. who's a dominant culture just so they can fit in and so there's there's a lot of attitudes to do with oh you're a betrayer you know you're a traitor of our mm -hmm. culture how dare you but I guess it's a lot of unspoken communication in between, mm -hmm. you know, lack of understanding of this person is just trying to survive. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, this sense of betrayal and mm -hmm. shame and why are you rejecting, you know, your own culture? So a lot of conflict and it does lead to a lot of mental health issues, like I mentioned, you know, drugs, alcohol, depression. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So what do you think, like can be done to like you know reduce all of these things you know basically it starts when you're a teenager probably that's probably the most vulnerable stage mm -hmm. for all of these issues to come mm -hmm. so what do you think can like parents or teachers or anyone do for to take care or and to protect students and like these teenagers from you know getting into these conflicts I guess now um, we have a better understanding of mm -hmm. how you know culture um, plays a role in our upbringing and our development and our personality exactly. as we grow up as well. So we're in a good time, you know. Yes. We used to not really understand it as well, but at the moment we we are addressing this issue. Um, we have education in school about cultural diversity. Mm -hmm. We do have people from different um, cultures, migrant backgrounds, students who come up to present about their own culture. And there's a lot of education and attitude changes to really incorporate, you know, a sense of, hey, 
we're not wrong just because we're different. You know, it's just because we're from a different culture and. And so there's there's a bigger tolerance um, for diversity now, mm-hmm. and so there's a better support for people from migrant backgrounds, mm-hmm. which is really good because it means that we don't have to reject our culture. Mm-hmm. We can actually embrace it and own it, even mm-hmm. if there's still a bit of shame and embarrassment. It really does come off quite differently. Um, it's mm-hmm. one thing for you know the dominant culture, the white Australians, to say I love sushi. And it's different when someone of culture to say I love sushi because then you're fitting in with the stereotypes yeah. as well. So there's there is a difference in there, but it's quite empowering to be able to finally, you know, unapologetically accept your own yeah, culture. Exactly. Yeah, totally. Like someone like me who is like very very. Proud of my own culture, like I totally get what you're saying.、Mm-hmm. What about you? Like, did you have a tough time, like, you know, accepting your own culture with the like complicated background that you have? And back in school, like you said that you know you're like your friends. You are only three Asians in the entire school. So,、mm-hmm. did you have like a conflict of interest back when you were young? Yeah. So. Obviously, like being two times international student,、um, I must admit though,、uh, when I when I did go back to Malaysia,、um, I guess my attitude and the way how people viewed、um, people from Western cultures, their attitude means that I behave a different way. So when I went to school back in Malaysia, I had a bit of、um, you know. People do treat me differently. People do treat me like I'm special because I'm from a Western culture, so、yeah. I must know more or something like that. And so I grew to kind of have a bit of, hey, I'm Australian, so you should treat me differently,、um, which obviously isn't the great, yeah, the best attitude to have、yeah. as a kid. Yeah.、Um, but what do I know? I was seven.、Um, you know, and then eventually I realized that hey, you know what? I'm not any different. From、mm-hmm. anyone else,、um, and then coming back in here, and having people mock, you know, who I am, or、um, throwing stereotypical assumptions at me,、um, and I start to, I guess, retaliate because we are, we are, even though we are from a culture, from one culture, we are individuals. So、exactly. we are different,、yeah. you know. Doesn't mean that we all like the same things or wear the same clothes or speak the same way, and so it became quite frustrating. And so, in my retaliation, I tried to rebel against the stereotypes. So just、mm-hmm. to say, hey, look, I'm an individual, and I'm very different too. And、mm-hmm. here are some like Western things that I like as well. I don't necessarily always like about oh everything about my culture.、Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess you know, as a teenager. I did go through a phase, and I think it's quite common with people course,、yeah. who, you know, who、um, who come to Australia when they're young as well.、Um, mm-hmm. There is a phase where we do reject our culture and try to be as Australian as possible.、Mm-hmm. Um, I couldn't, I guess, relate to people from my culture as well.、Mm-hmm. I feel like they're just very set in their ways. Yeah, and I thought. Australian culture is really cool, <laughs> as a teenager, and so I learned to like white boys too. <laughs>、um, you know, I found it very difficult for me to relate to Asian boys.、Mm-hmm. I just find them very culturally different.、Mm-hmm. Um, so as a result, growing up as well, because of my upbringing and you know the blend of the people that I grew up with, I wouldn't say that I'm. Very Asian, but I am also quite Asian. But also, I do have you know, growing up amongst white、mm-hmm. people, that I do have you know certain white characteristics、mm-hmm. that is part of my upbringing now.、Mm-hmm. And sometimes I do find it difficult to relate to people from my culture as well. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. But well, well, how would you describe it now? Like, are you like in a way? Proud of your culture now? Yeah, I would say I am,、um, and I would say that there is there is parts where I am protective of my culture, and that I don't share everything that I enjoy with white Australians, for example.
mm-hmm. because I guess part of me is still instinctively reacting to the possible rejection. You know, them going, "Oh, you listen to this, or you do this. That's mm-hmm. weird." Mm-hmm. You know, I'm still in- instinctively guarding myself against that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say, like, you know, I do like my language. You know, I um, growing up, I. I would say it's my second language, <laughs> um, but at the same time, you know, I do enjoy watching Asian dramas and listening oh, to. Who doesn't, honestly? <laughs> who it's doesn't? so entertaining, right? Korean dramas? Oh, uh, not really Korean, but like more like Chinese. Uh-huh. But you know, I I still watch it, and I think, oh, hey, you know, that that's how I learn about my culture in a more accurate manner, um, and I find that you know, people who are removed from the culture, they may. Learn it more superficially. Mm-hmm. They may hold on to certain stereotypes as well. Mm-hmm. That I think is, yeah, quite simplistic. And I think you know, just emerging myself in um, things media that's produced by my own culture instead of Western people's yeah. lens on it would be quite interesting. And so that's that's how I actually learned my language. Um, that's how I actually developed. Know my language skills. Just off topic, by the way, since you mentioned about Chinese media, I have to mention that I really love reading Chinese web novels. They are amazing. Anyway, going back to our topic. So, what would you like like to you know suggest to anyone who is in your position? I suppose um, you know I actually have such an interesting like upbringing that mm-hmm. I think it it brings an advantage. Mm-hmm. in um, being able to view you know the outside lens and the mm-hmm. inside lens as well um, in the culture and outside the culture viewing in viewing out um, and that you know sometimes it's all about perspective mm-hmm. and sometimes it's also about you know your experiences and sometimes there's so much to learn there's there's just always something to learn about your own culture and about your own identity mm-hmm. um, and it doesn't have to be you know an internal fight with either or, um, you know, it's it's so good to be able to embrace both of your cultures and just going, hey, look, I have insights of my own culture and I also have insights of being, I guess, Australian as well. Mm-hmm. And so offering that different perspective means that you have a better way to relate to people, all mm-hmm. kinds of people, you know. Mm-hmm. It makes you a person who can actually communicate more effectively totally makes sense like there is a saying that i really like a lot uh the more we learn the less we know as you said the more you learn about your culture the the more you realize that actually i don't know anything and there is so much more that i need to know and then you get to like get different perspectives it's a wonderful message that you have sent to everyone so would you like to say anything before we end the show today Oh, I guess, you know, thank you for inviting me and it's been, you know, really fun to be able to share my experiences and hopefully um, there's someone out there who will be able to relate to my experiences as well. Thank you so much for coming to us and talking to us, sharing everything with us. It was wonderful to learn about your really complicated background (laughs) and growing up in different countries. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. Once again, we'll see you again. Thank you. Thank you. See ya.